Hey everybody, we're waiting on Rhea. She's gonna be a few minutes late, so it's okay. Hey everybody, we're waiting on Rhea. She's gonna be a few minutes late. Oh crap, background noise. Okay, <laughs> so I had something going on in the background. All right, so how is everybody tonight? So we're gonna be talking about special events and Rhea's got tons of those uh awards and everything that she's gonna be showing us later and uh it's thursday and i'm exhausted from work today so actually this whole week it's been crazy so so yeah So let's get on with the uh, news and let's talk about that real quick. And uh, let's see here, have all these stuff. So a couple little things is, um, Eight Tevla satellites with FM transponders on SpaceX launch. So they will be uh, launching this on the uh, SpaceX. Um, and they were developed in Israel. And they are going to be um, beacon transmissions on 436.4 megahertz. And the uplink frequency is 145.970. And the downlink is uh, 436.400. So all eight satellites will have the same frequency. So as long as the footprints are overlapping, only one FM transponder will be activated. The satellites were built by eight schools in eight different parts of Israel. So that's really cool that they had done that. And India is proposing and to allocate... Um, 300, uh, 3,400 to 3,425 megahertz to 5G. So uh, they're looking at doing 5G private networks um, as part of that. And apparently it's going to be through their uh, Telecom Regulatory Authority of India uh, may even consider reserving 25 megahertz spectrum in the 3,400 band. So um, for private network access. So that's definitely something going on and let's see here so eight u.s schools have moved forward in the um ariss selection process so they have actually and is pleased to announce the school such host organization selected for the july 1st through december 31st of 2022 time frame um, so the schools and host organizations are going to be uh, Bueller Challenger and Science Center in Paramus, New Jersey, uh, Eaton Public Library in Eaton, Colorado, Davis Aerospace Technical High School in Detroit, Michigan, St. Stephen's Episcopal School in Houston, Texas, Harris Middle School in Spruce Pine, uh, New North Carolina, uh, Copernic Observatory in Science in uh, New York and uh, Mon uh, Monroe Corral Jr. Children's Hospital, Vanderbilt, which is in Nashville, Tennessee. Though you're very familiar with that um, children's hospital, actually. Peyton used to go there. And Canterbury School of Fort Myers in Fort Myers, Florida. So definitely they have them all over the United States in different parts. So they are going to be a cooperative venture of international amateur radio societies and the science agencies that support the International Space Station in the United States. And so um, that's really, really cool. So those eight schools and things are um, going to be pretty awesome. Yes. Let's see here. Oh, hey, Raven. Hey, baby girl. So the year is a solar cycle update and it's going to be stronger than expected. So just uh, know that 
Uh, new sunspot counts confirm that the younger young solar cycle is outperforming official forecasts with the rate of geomagnet storm days nearly tripling in the past 12 months. So, way to go. And, um, roll TV! Where are you at? Huh. Ah, here we go. This is an interesting one. Cat on a hot satellite dish. Elon Musk's Starlink antenna hit surprise problem. So apparently Starlink was has ambitious plans to bring internet access to everybody. So a lot of people have been talking about Starlink. And a customer tweeted a photo of five cats huddled on its Starlink dish, which links homes to more than a thousand satellites and noted that the presence of the future felines had slowed his internet performance. So, uh, just so you know, apparently cats are, aren't only in shacks, but they are on satellites, too. Oh, <laughs> yes. Let's see here. Yes, it is tax time. Actually, you're going to be surprised, but they are actually going to open up uh filing on january the 24th which is a lot earlier than what they've done in the past so this is going to be very interesting so and evan really <laughs> what did i do in my hair i um it's curled actually evan it is curled believe it or not and uh yeah that's what it kind of happened so part of it's still curled part of it's kind of like gone straight yeah that's my hair for me w2s what about w2s <laughs> thanks evan uh w2s are still supposed to be on time by january the 31st however um all those people out there wanting that advanced child tax credit paperwork you gotta wait on that letter before you file your taxes so yeah that's important yeah that's true evan they totally opened it earlier so they can take our money sooner yeah mm -hmm. yep and what the heck? Seriously? Seriously, Mike? Really? I should just ban you for that. Yeah, taxes are fun stuff. I've already been getting uh, crazy, crazy questions. So, yeah. So. So, yes, let's see here. There's other news. So. so, let's see here. So, Youth on the Air Camp Day is going to return in June. So, that's going to be cool um, for all the young, young ones out there. And... Um, the International DX Convention in uh, Visalia, California is canceled. So that is not happening. Um, so, yes. Oh, look. It's the best. <laughs> well, one, um, uh, CBAs have their advantages. Uh, Ed, no, I work on 1040s. I've worked on partnerships, which is another one of my specialties. I'm really good at partnerships. I haven't done a C Corp or an S Corp, but I am capable of doing either one. They're just more complicated. Uh, 
Let's see here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Rhea's going to be joining us shortly. She's uh, in the background. I'm waiting for her to uh, give the go ahead, add her to the stream. <laughs> A lot of questionable investments, Lon. I don't know if I really want to know about them questionable investments. Um, just to clear some things up that's been going around that's not true is um, if you send your friend or um, your pal or anyone else money on Venmo, if you're not a business doing Venmo, you don't have to worry about the stupid 1099s and um, K1s. So don't worry about those. I'm tired of people talking about it because it's a lot of misinformation. That's cool, Ed. That's real cool. I might have to reach out to you if I have to do an escort. Well, oops, <laughs> sorry. I guess I have to add myself. Well, um, I was adding you, and then you added you. And it canceled each other out. Yeah, you know, yeah, I don't know. It's it's kind of like weekdays here and school nights are kind of rough. So it is. I understand. Is. Yeah. Um, Peyton's going virtual tomorrow. So. Well, yeah, my kids were virtual last week, right? They um, They were and they came out of virtual this week. I don't know if they're going to go back virtual. I kind of doubt it right now i think basically the school like times it around the holidays so um at christmas easter thanksgiving that kind of stuff they just decide you know out of safety because they know people gather together they're just, just gonna go virtual for that week afterward to make sure they don't have any spikes and then bam they stop so but anyway yeah i'm gonna listen to a little bit of news um Vizalia, or Visalia, whatever DX convention being canceled is kind of a kind of unfortunate. Unfortunately, um, it is a given because they're in California, and California tends to lock down at the drop of a hat anyway. So, yes, yeah, uh, yeah, Rhea Radio, <laughs> Rhea Radio, yeah, I have, yeah. yeah. I've been doing a lot of radio recently. I've been enjoying myself. I'm sorry. But did I interrupt anything? I'm sorry. No, you didn't interrupt anything. I just went on my whole little spat about people and them actually sitting there and um, how can I put it? Um, <clears throat> misinformation about Venmo, PayPal, and Cash App. And it's crazy it is i mean you know it's because well, what they're looking at is they're looking at the business profiles they're not looking at your profile or my profile but if yeah. we're doing business stuff then they're going to want to tax us on it and give it to us but they're looking at their business profiles uh, they're not going to go send it out here to you and me and i mean like you know all these people getting child support via venmo or cash yeah. out or whatever they're getting it through they're like worried about it. I get it, but they're not going to be taxed on it. IRS has already said it. So, I mean, it's just a lot of misinformation and people like losing their crap as they always do. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, I'm I, so like my taxes have been getting complicated every year. Okay. Yeah. We've had that. And, um, so. Some years actually have been, have been better than others. I mean, you know, some years have been kind of like, like, and actually some years I changed, when I changed jobs and I began to work in New Jersey, it was a lot better because I didn't have to file tax. Well, the first year I had to file taxes in New York because I still had income from New York. 
And um, I had to file for New York and New Jersey. And then the next year, when I worked a full year in Jersey, I decided to file for Jersey. And that was heaven because I didn't have to buy extra software. I didn't have to file all of the New York stupid forms. I didn't have to give up any of my tax credits in New Jersey. And, you know, believe it or not, as as oppressive as New Jersey is sometimes in some respects, um, the tax situation is better than New York City. Well, because yeah. in um, New York City, no, you have I don't, kids. I don't babysit my own kids, Evan. Okay, that's called <laughs> parenting. Okay. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. But yeah, no, it's kind of, it's, it's really interesting. Um, but yeah, the, uh, like, uh, tax-wise, what else? And I have other financial stuff and some stuff I can't even disclose because it's like proprietary information. Um. I was explaining something to you, Kat. Do you know who invented the QR code? Um, I was hoping that you say you. So that way you can be like this like hidden multimillionaire, but obviously it's no. not you. So no. now I have no idea who invented the QR code, but I love them QR codes. <laughs> no, no. The inventor is the guy who sent me all those useless coupons. Oh, what? Really? No, no, I'm joking. He doesn't oh, QR geez, codes. He is an inventor. Say. He's just not that inventor. No. It was Toyota. And it's actually not even um it's Denso, right? So Denso makes all the parts and stuff for Toyota. Oh, uh, you mean Denso auto parts, like the Denso mm -hmm. they make. Um actually they don't they make stuff not just for Toyota, they make it right. for um Honda too. And um yeah, Other, they, they they make a lot of aftermarket um, parts like um, O'Reilly's AutoZone, Advanced Auto, too. So, yeah, Denso Denso makes a lot of stuff, and Denso actually, yes, Nippon Denso, they actually make um, a lot of of things, and it's because of the amount of parts they make to categorize and you know make it easier to, to catalog. They invented the the 3D barcode called the QR code. And then, of course, in Japan, they began using it for a lot of stuff. And, of course, they started in Japan, and the rest of the world follows along because Japan is the trendsetters, and, you know, they, they did that. So I mentioned that because I did a, a video about a, um, a book that, that I got for review. Um, I don't have it here. But basically, you learn Morse code with QR codes, and it, it's, it's kind of innovative, I think. I think I think the idea is good. I think um, for advanced users, it's probably not uh, how they want to learn Morse code, but uh, it could be useful for some people. But anyway, but that's my story. That's your story. Yeah. All right. Wow. Any more news tonight? No, there was really not much news except for the fact that um, eight schools slash organizations are. Um, Got cho finally got chosen um, for the uh, yeah. ARISS project. ARIS, yeah. and uh, Yes, ARISS. And ARIS. Um, ARIS. ARIS, mm -hmm. thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, and actually, one of them is actually Vanderbilt's Children's Hospital, which is, like, not far from me. And mm -hmm. um, Peyton has spent quite a bit in, uh, at Vanderbilt over the years when he was younger. So really? Okay. Yes, it's a neat little hospital. It's really, um, it's really sweet. Um, they had a one year, I think, was during when we went there. It was like during Christmas time, and they actually had a Garfield, a person in Garfield costume. And uh, Peyton lost his crap, and he was like, "Ah, scared of it." And I was like, "It's just Garfield the cat, just in like you know taller form." But you know, no, ah, it's a kid. What can I say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's funny so anyway mm -hmm. um yeah so tonight we're gonna we're gonna talk about special events right and um yes i teased on my channel one of the things that um we talk about so uh i don't know how anybody how well i think a lot of people know this the aw was founded in 1914 right hiram percy mm -hmm. maxim and um the clarence tusca they brought an idea to the Hartford Radio Club in Connecticut. And then what happened was they um, 
that idea kind of uh, the Hartford Radio Club really kind of fell out with them and they fell out with Hartford Radio Club. So they formed their own organization called the ARRL. And it was really a radio relay league, which is basically they use it to relay messages. Anyway, um, long story short, in 2014, they had a centennial. Hi, Ham Radio Adventure guy. Good evening to you too. And the centennial was this big event because it's a hundred years, right? Right. When you're a hundred years old, you do a lot of things. So one of the things they did was they had a special event where they recruited radio amateurs in every state and territory to operate the W1AW call sign. And it was called the W1AW Centennial QSO Party. So I took part in that. Did I ever take part in that? I actually, um, <laughs> I got so many people mad because I went on and I had pileups 5, 10 kilohertz wide. And then that blew out a lot of nets and stuff like that. I feel really bad about it because of all the interference. So I narrowed down the bandwidth afterward. But it was operated split. Which I'm talking about, by the way, on, on my live stream on Sundays about um, HF operating. And the um, long story short, they sent a little uh, plexiglass thingy. I don't have it here with me. I wish I had brought it with me. But the... Um, with two challenge coins, one of them, and you can yeah. actually see it. I might have it here on the phone. Um, they actually send it with two challenge coins, and the two challenge coins, one of them are for AWRL 100 years, the centennial, and the other one is for W1AW, right? And of course, yes. you know, you guys know what a challenge coin is. I don't have to explain that to you. Okay. And challenge coin, I guess, dates back to the Roman Empire or something like that. Uh, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was uh, kind of interesting. Oh, I can share this now. Yes, so, you should be able to share it to your Mac. It's called AirDrop, Ria. I yeah. can't share it on my computer because I don't see. have AirDrop for my computer like you do your. Mac. A Mac? If you got a Mac, I could airdrop it all day long twice on Sunday. Well, I got a Mac because it just works. You know? I'm, I'm not oh. hating the Mac. I know. <laughs> all right. Let me show you what I got here. Uh, <sighs> yeah. So I'm sure there are hams who have all over who have some like this. Right? Yes. Right. So what happened is... Um, yeah, they gave this to every participant who took part in this. And this was this was amazing. And special events are there to commemorate the good times and they're there to commemorate the bad times and everything in between. So I learned about special events. Oh, come on, WA7, PB, Max are awesome. You know, Steve I Jobs mean, he say. said, oh. <laughs> you, know, you know, one of the co-founders of Apple was a ham, right? Uh yes, and did you also? Uh, who was a ham? It wasn't was. Steve. Was it Steve Jobs? No, Steve Jobs no, had a neighbor was. who was a ham. Okay. Yeah, it was the other one, Steve Wozniak, otherwise known as no. Woz. Right. Woz was a ham. Yeah. So anyway, but yeah. Um. Yeah, so they, they did this, and special events are times to commemorate good and bad things, okay? Mm -hmm. I've done so many special events, and I'm, I'm going to share with you a, um, a few tips and tricks I've learned over the years about special events. But Kat, since we're making this interactive, can you tell me, have you worked any special events, or have you heard of any special events? Has anybody taught you about special events, or are you a complete greenhorn about special events? Um, one, I don't think I've ever worked a special event. I have watched, co I have worked contests, mm -hmm. but I don't think there were special events because they were just QSO parties and that was it. Right. So I, I don't really think they were like anything special as in like, you know, um, yeah, nothing special. I've gone to special events, but mm -hmm. nothing. On okay. Party. So you're in luck. So we're going to talk about special events tonight. So. What is yeah. a special event? The the first the first thing you gotta know about special events is that um the Battle of Trenton, huh? 
nice. Uh, the so the um, okay. A special event basically is where radio amateurs call each other, and one of them will call and try to work stations and send the make a contact and possibly, not always though, send a special QSL card, right? And some of them have mm -hmm. certificates and diplomas and. These days they're all down downloadable and I think they're really taking the charm out of it by making it downloadable, get off my lawn. But um, they're kind of just, um, it used to be that we get a nice paper certificate in the mail. See, no, they make this downloadable crap. Um, I'm just kidding. Downloadable certificates are nice, okay? They save paper and they're colorful and you can print them out if you really want to. There are several types, right? You know, you have like anniversaries, you have like commemorations, um, and then you have basically like, you know, and you have once in a lifetime things. One of the popular ones I always work is the 13 colonies. Have you ever heard of the 13 colonies? 13 colonies? Yes. Um, yeah, because the 13 colonies is a special event I do know that because we have discussed it before. We were talking about contesting or something. But yes, right. we have, I have heard about the 13 colonies. Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. Good, good, good. Because, yeah, because the 13 colonies is near and dear to my heart. I've actually been a 13 colonies operator for several years. I've been on hiatus for a little while. What they do is they basically have these call signs that you work. You have from a to m right and then mm -hmm. they have one station in pennsylvania wm3 pen right to celebrate william penn and um they have um well of course and the signing of declaration of independence and the birth of of a nation you know that when you end when you used to enter pennsylvania they used to say america begins here and people got so offended by that you know <laughs> Well, they change uh -huh. it to um they change it to pursue your happiness. Oh, yeah. pursue your happiness. Wasn't that yeah. on a um movie? Or wasn't that a yeah, wasn't that like on a movie or something? I don't remember. Yeah. Uh no, pursue your happiness. You know, you know why they call it pursue your happiness, right? No, but I know that came off of a movie though. No, they call it pursue of happiness because Declaration of Independence, Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit of Happiness. So you oh. go to Pennsylvania to pursue your happiness. And oh, where America begins. Of, oh, no, is no, like I'm a, thinking of the movie, Pursuit yeah. of Happiness. Yeah. Yeah, where America begins is, you know, is a tribute to the fact that the Declaration of Independence was signed in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Okay. I live not far from Pennsylvania, by the way. So, um, but yeah, it's like, um, yeah, but there is so much history and heritage. But they, anyway, they have these 13 colony stations of all the 13 original colonies, right? Mm -hmm. And then what you do is you work all these 13 colonies, you know, you, you try to get them. But, you know, you could try to get them like on the first day. You could try to get them on Morse code only. And then you work uh, the Pennsylvania station and you also work one called, um, uh, there's a Britain, there's a British station they usually have that's called um, GB13COL. So, you know, you work the, the, the British and now they have one with France too. Okay. Ooh, vive la France. Vive la France. Yeah. Vive la France. So, yeah. And they have, so they have, these are bonus stations. So you try to catch them all. And um, they actually endorse the station for different things. They used to endorse it. I don't know if they still do. They, they endorse it for NRA membership. Um, of course, I got that. And um, they endorse it for um, a veteran, too. So if you're a veteran, you can get endorsed as a veteran. And, um, yeah, it's, it's really, really nice, you know. I mean, there was some controversy a few years ago. I mean, what isn't without controversy these days? You know what I mean? But, um, but yeah, so it's things like that. There were other um, events I was involved in. Um, you know where the Hindenburg is, right? 
Yes. Okay. So the Hindenburg disaster was where this huge airship, and it was actually from Nazi Germany yes. at that time, and it came to the United States and was landing at um, at uh, Lakers Naval Air Station, which actually is now Joint Base um, um, McGuire Dixon Lakers, right? Which is uh -huh. in New Jersey, of all places. Okay. And oh, the huge manatee, the humanity. <laughs> oh, the humanity. And then we actually went and visited the crash site. We set up some antennas on base. We got permission to, to set up radio on base. Okay. And we operated from there. And, you know, we got to tour all that historic stuff and you know, a lot, and it's like, you know, you go back to historic places and you recreate special events and you boot spammers from the chat. Um, so, you know. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. I, wasn't, I mean, I mean, like, you're like so much better. I mean, like, I didn't even catch it. Then again, <laughs> I'm over here like, I'm over here holding a Houdini, like mm -hmm. a baby. Um, he is really over here laying like a baby on me. Aww. Oh, it, it kind of reminds me of when the boys were like this tiny because mm -hmm. they used to be five pounds one and five pounds three ounces. So it kind of reminds me of that. But he's nice. only four pounds, he's only four pounds though. Nice, yeah. WM3 Pen is actually a club call sign, so they have a club and they use yeah. a call sign for, for the special event. So yeah, so special events are special, you know, they, they commemorate things. And um, were we running a ZEP? No, we're running a vertical, you know? Mm -hmm. We're running a vertical. And that was, um, that was amazing. So yeah, so, um, you know, sometimes you go places and you, you activate special events, right? And mm -hmm. sometimes you don't. Sometimes you operate from home. We actually operated from home too because home you you get you know you have like good stations you could put on the air, okay? Like you know at home I have a tower. I have multiple antennas out in the back, and I have stuff you know so I can mm -hmm. I can you know, get out far and wide. But um, also military bases in general are very noisy RF wise because they have radar mm -hmm. and all that crud going on there. You know, um, and they have jamming in some of them too. So, um, but yeah, it's, um, but yeah, it's, you know, that's a nice, that was a nice historical event. We had an event called W2H, the 40th anniversary of the Hindenburg crash. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we've done some other things. So one of the things you might have seen is in a special event. So your call sign is what, Kat? W4DXY. And mine is? N2RJ. Good. So you notice these, these call signs. And my call sign is one of the shorter regular call signs, right? I have one by two, okay? Yes. So I have one mm -hmm. letter. Yes. I have a number. And then mm -hmm. I have two letters as a suffix, okay? Yes, which For is your events, You can get a? One by one call sign. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. So Can what do you do? A special event, Ria. Huh? Can we create a special event? If you can find some historic, I don't know. Um, oh, never mind. I was gonna be smart, but but I'll. I'll, I'll show. <laughs> you uh, can. I'll... You can. No, seriously. If you can find it, uh, you know, it really doesn't have to be, you know, like like really really. Um, exceptional and amazing i mean people do special events for all sorts of stuff they kind of discourage uh, that okay i was gonna call it uh, hrf hmm. okay well i mean you know if you want to do some historic okay <laughs> pardon me it's an inside joke guys it's an inside joke she got uh -huh. it <laughs> um i don't i don't think so ron um i don't i don't think that we can do one like me getting no. my general license um nor <coughs> on um uh 
ham uh, ham radio fantasies. We can't do a special event like that, unfortunately. Um, uh. And uh, no, 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 um, no ham radio venture guy. We are not making you any brownies. I'll give you the recipe though. <laughs> the brownies come out of the oven, and we have a special event to celebrate. Yes. Matter of fact, I can go whip some up, and then we can just celebrate eating brownies on air, Rhea. Brownies on the air. That's good. Hey, that's a new thing. I think we should go and have our whole system set up. And hey, now, Addy. Yeah. Hi, Addy. Good night, Addy. Good night, Addy. Anyway. All right. So, um, his his whole um, yeah. So this whole special event is basically, um, you know, you have something historic that you want to do, and you know, you could you could work that. But um, a lot of things you can you can do in, you, with these special event call signs. So anyway, let's get on the one by one call sign. So, <laughs> sorry, Boda, brownies on the air. Yeah, yeah. So what we can do is like you know you have a special event for something historic, right? So I don't know what what goes on in your your neck of the woods. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Hundredth anniversary or something, you know? Of being a redneck. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you can do that. You know. Here's your sign. <laughs> no. Um. Yeah. Um. But I mean, like, even even ham radio related things, and some some of them use it for de expeditions. Only you technically not really supposed to do that, but some of them do it anyway. But yeah, so they have um. They said the special event call sign system meets the needs of amateur operators for temporary operation of their stations during events that are of special significance, right? A special event call sign is an amateur station with a one by one, so it's one letter, one number, and one letter. That may be reserved for assignment stations operating in conjunction with these short-term events, right? Mm -hmm. So the FCC authorized these, and you can have like a K, N, or W, and then you have a number, and then you have the one-letter suffix, right? And what you do is you re you request and reserve these, so you can request a call sign, okay? Mm -hmm. Um. You know, like, let's say, so last year I, I took part in an event called the Hudson R River Radio Relay, okay? Otherwise known as HR3. And HR3 was a, um, an event where we activated an island called Bannerman Island, right? And Bannerman Island is an island in the Hudson River. So, um, and has a historic castle and everything. And what they were doing were they were raising awareness of the island to where, um, you know, they were trying to raise funds and stuff like that. But we also had a ham radio special event just to commemorate the history of the app. So I got all these call signs. I got N2 H U D S O N. And then um, I got one H N2 V and N2 D. So there, there was a club called the Hudson Valley Digital Network, HVDN, and HVDN kind of just um, did that special event. Okay. Um, and then you you know, and you can select your coordinator. So these are actually done by the the, the VEC coordinators, right? These are done by eight. I usually put eight of Laurel. Um, there's no cost for these, by the way, no charge. Uh, you could do it through eight of Laurel, W5YI, W4VC, um, W cars, and Laurel. Okay. And then you put your beginning end date, name of the event, um, name of club station. And then, um, you know, it's like uh, you put your own call sign here, okay? And then um, you put your current mailing address and email, and then you put a description. So you basically describe your special event saying, um, you know, what it's all about, okay? And then it'll usually get approved within, I think, um, I don't think it's instant. I think it, it gets done within like one or two days. And then what happens is um, you can actually, if you hear one of these call signs on the air, you can search the call sign and then, you know, you can search by date range. Let's say, let's see, we want to see what happens on January 
um, January 31st, you know, on 2021, right? Then you search, oh, end date. Well, I think they have um, February, February 4th, 2021. Okay, search. Okay. Hmm. Um, let's see. And to you. Okay. So you see like all of these, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. I actually have the event set up for 2022 already. Right? Yeah. Where we have, um, so we're doing June 11th to June 12th. <coughs> Excuse me. Hudson River Radio Relay. Oops. And we're actually, um, you know, we're doing this event. So if you hear one of these call signs on the air, <coughs> excuse me, you could pop it in and then you can see who is actually operating it and who is in charge of call sign. Um, yeah, you know, MLK birthday weekend would be nice. Um, I really wish some hams would do that. I didn't even think of that. Um, I don't know. Uh, so let me see if there's act actually anyone. Anyone for that? That's a good choice. You know, Dr. King. Dr. King was actually pretty, pretty nice. You know, um, pretty. Who is it? Houdini. Come here. That's a shame. Um. Yeah. Anyway, MLK birthday weekend, huh? Let's see. Get Bill Engvall to get his license so he can say, here's your sign. That's what I thought. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. His, his, uh, his call sign could have a, a K, uh, KYS at the, at the end of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, no, HYS, sorry. Yeah. So, and, so you know, in the United States, our, our rules are um, under Part 97, right? And under Part 97... You actually um, have, uh, let's see here. Okay. They apply to the special event call sign system on part zero and 97. Okay. Um, so, yeah, actually, the FCC's charter here um, certifies the name of the commission, common database of amateur special event call signs, right? You know, this whole radio regulation and the FCC was formed because of amateur radio, you know, it's just, it's bizarre, but we'll talk about that one day. Um, yeah. And then the special event call sign system, call sign is selected by the station licensee, right? The call sign must have the single letter prefix. And then, um, so the rules when operating, when you're transmitting in conjunction with an event of special significance, a station may substitute for its assigned call sign, a special event call sign is shown for that station for the period of time in a common database coordinated, maintained, and disseminated by the special event call sign database coordinators. In this case, these coordinators are the VECs, you know, like AWRL, Laurel, W5Y, etc. Additionally, the station must transmit its assigned call sign at least once per hour during the transmission. So if you are operating such a station, right? Let's say you operate, I don't know, K2A for Alabama founding day or something like that, right? Uh -huh. And um, like every hour, doesn't have to be on the hour, but just like every once every hour, you say this is W4DXY operating K2A, you know? And that's all you have to say, right? That is uh -huh. literally all you got to say. So, yeah. Uh, so... Yeah, and and they're actually pretty nice to use. Um, you know, some people reserve them for contests, although I don't think that is really a, a, a proper use of them, but people do it anyway, you yeah. know. And then under the frequently asked questions, so this is what I'm talking about. Just yeah. what is considered a, an event of special significance, right? A special event operation usually commemorates an event which is publicly significant to the amateur community. Ideally, this is a one-time or recurring celebration, festival, anniversary, 
convention, dedicated, or public demonstration of amateur radio or the like. Special event call signs may not be requested just so that you will be able to have a short call sign during an upcoming amateur radio operating event or contest, okay? While special mm -hmm. events may be scheduled during on-air operational periods designed, designated, or sponsored by various amateur organizations, a special event call sign coordinator may determine that your planned special event operation is not in keeping with the intent of the special event call sign systems. So, you know, ARL or W5Y could say, no soup for you, okay? <laughs> um, but, you know, most of them are slides. Like, who may reserve a special event one by one call? Any licensed radio amateur, okay? You don't need to hold any special class of operator license. How do I go about reserving? You do that? Okay. Anyway. Right. Um, you can reserve it up to a year in advance. And um, are you notified? Uh, almost immediately, it could take up to a week. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, 15 days is a maximum, right? They try to discourage that. And then abuses, you know, if, they're, if you abuse, you lose. Okay. If you abuse, you lose. So if you abuse it, you don't get to get get to use it again, right? Yeah. So you know they say reserving more than one is is discouraged, but in reality, there's it's widespread to do it, especially for like some like thirteen colonies, which thirteen colonies has like a lot of um, call signs. So let's see if they actually reserve their call sign. Uh, thirteen colonies. Yeah, you see. They reserved theirs for 2022 already, right? I usually operate K2I, but where is it? Uh, well, there is one for 2021. Where is the one for 2022? It's somewhere missing. A E J K C H M L B. Son of a gun, it's not, they don't have K2I. Well, that kind of, they don't have it for New Jersey. Wow, okay. Hmm. Ah, maybe I could search by call sign. K2 India. There we go. They call it 14th Annual 13 Colony Special Event. And I guess the state coordinator, K2FIR, um, Mike, uh, he, uh, I know him actually. He was at one of my club meetings. He, really? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know, Kat, I know everybody, okay? You know what, Rhea? I forget that you know everybody, okay? Yeah. I just forget that, but it's okay. It's okay. But yeah. yeah. So, um, so apparently for 13 colonies, each of the individual state coordinators, they rec they requisition the call sign themselves, right? So, yeah, you know, and that's a one-by-one -one call sign. They're pretty neat. But do you know that you do not have to use a one-by-one -one call sign for a special event, of course? Right? Like as we found out with WM3 pen, you can actually have, use a regular call sign but one thing you might not know, Kat. So, Kat, let me let me ask you something. Uh -huh. When you upgraded for general, by the way, you don't have to do this again because your general upgrade posted to the FCC database, okay? I know. I'm so happy about that. I made an 89. I'm really happy about that for it. Yeah. I'm yeah. rubbing that on the end. Yeah. You're going to be extra before half a ham radio YouTube, okay? Yeah, I know. Oh, you know? Okay, good. Yeah, I'm going to get my extra. You know, just give me a little bit. Let me study, you know. Let me get after out of this whole tax season thing and uh and we'll hit the ground running on studying hardcore. Yeah, I know. You, you, can, you, know you know, I might just get tired of doing taxes and at night I might just come home and study some ammo some uh you know, the extra and then I might just yeah. take the test and surprise everybody like I did with the general. And then everybody's like, oh, you didn't tell me. You didn't tell me. You told us and you teased us about you taking it. But, oh, my God, you didn't give us a definitive date. And we're so butthurt about it. Well, I, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. 
Um, that well, way I can go tease y'all if I didn't end up taking it and I chickened out. This way it yeah. saves me face. That's all I care about is I save face. So Ed Sweeney, AC3IK, has a good question. How many operators can work the special event call sign? They have shifts, right? Um, I think the answer to that is pretty much unlimited. Okay. Like some of these clubs, like the Street Key Century Club, they had like K3Y. And, you know, they basically had a lot of operators working, you know. So I don't think there's really a limit. I think they try to discourage you from having a call sign more than one um, instance of the call sign on a particular band and mode. Like, for example, on 20 meters phone, if you have two operators using the same special event call sign, I think it's still legal. As a matter of fact, I'm certain it's legal, but it's not encouraged. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, we have shifts. How it usually works is we have a sign up and then mm -hmm. we sign up and then, you know, we have like a, a, a group list that we share our schedules on and such. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's a good question. Um, but there is one other way to do a special event call sign. And this one, actually, I got from uh, Bob Shank uh, N2OO. Um, those who, you know, who are in the DX world know who he is. He's from South Jersey DX Association. Uh, so back to your question. When you upgraded to general, what did you have to do until your call sign made it to the database? Until your upgrade? Slash AG. Correct. Okay. So let me tell you something. That slash AG and slash AE and slash whatever is legally required by the FCC, right? But yeah. did you know that the FCC permits you to, um, to use any other suffix you want, right? Mm -hmm. Outside of those, as long as it doesn't conflict with those. So I can't use N2RJ stroke AG because I'm not a general, right? Um, I can use N2RJ stroke AE, but mm -hmm. it's kind of like a moot point, okay? Yes. Um, I but but I could I could say um, N2RJ stroke BMB means bring me brownies, right? Are you only bring you brownies now, Rio? <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, I'm, I'm throwing that. Can I just make a list on all this thing of people who want I'm brownies? I'm throwing the audience a bone. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Like, uh. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's like that, okay? So what we did was, what Bob told me is that, you know, he might use a club call sign and, and, and do stroke 150 or stroke something to celebrate an anniversary. Um, one popular event that the AWRL does is Hiram Percy Maxim's birthday okay mm -hmm. and you know Hiram Percy Maxim was one of the founders of the AWRL he was like the founding president okay he is the old man himself right mm -hmm. and um like every 10 years we celebrate his birthday so I did it on 140 and 150 okay I think 160 uh when is he gonna be 160 um uh so let me see here. So he was in 1869, right? Mm -hmm. And um the 150th birthday was in 2019. So the next time we're gonna celebrate his birthday is in 2029. Okay. Okay. And how we usually do it is the ARL, and I'll show you this here. Um how they usually do it is the ARL gets people to sign to sign their call sign slash and the birthday number. Okay. A birthday. Well, you know, Lon, we can't do it every year, okay? Because if you do it every year, it doesn't be special anymore. You know, so you do it every 10 years. Just to yeah, I mean, I mean it takes the speciality out of it. Right. <laughs> it doesn't make it special anymore. It makes it like, well. You know, it makes it like, instead of like a filet mignon, mm -hmm. it makes it like a sirloin. I mean, yeah, that's a good analogy food-wise. Yeah, food. 
Yeah. So it, you you know anybody who's an ARL member can use call sign slash one fifty, and um, uh, they have um, multipliers, three points with W one A W slash one fifty. Um, contact with any ARL member used to earn two points, and then one point for QSO for non-members. Um, social media, QRP. So it used to be, right, that um, for the, the, let's see, HPM 140, okay? So uh, HPM 140, come on. You see Google, okay? Oh, I use Bing. Oh, uh, here I am. Um, yeah, okay. All right, so HPM 140 birthday celebration, okay? It was in 2009. Right, um, February 17th, he was born in September 2. He sees a September person, okay? We're awesome. And he died February 17, 1936. Okay, and then, um, so back in back then, okay, um, they actually um, they said all amateur stations may participate. Life members and those persons holding AWRL appointments, elected positions, or AWRL HQ staff may add slash 140 to their call sign. Okay. Volunteer okay. examiners, assistant emergency coordinators, QSL bureau workers, registered instructors, awards managers also invited to participate. So, you know, they back then it was only a select set of people were able to operate the special event. And for 150, they opened it up to everybody. But I, you know, I I did this as a um, a QSL bureau worker and a volunteer examiner, and I wasn't a life member back then. I mean, now today I'll do it as an elected elected official of AWRL and you know and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I wonder what they're going to do for 160. But it was pretty interesting. I made a nice um, uh, QSL card for this. Where, um, so you know, you know, um, uh, do you know what what Hiram Percy Maxim was famous for? Who was who was uh, famous? The founder of the AWRL. No clue. All right. So his father, right, was the inventor of the Maxim gun. Okay, which is a machine gun. Right. Cool. Yeah, I'm telling you. But um, the old man himself, Hiram, he, Hiram Percy Maxim, he was the inventor of the um, the suppressor, the silencer. Okay. Uh -huh. So yeah. So um, <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, uh, he was the inventor of the silencer. So on the card, I put um, a picture of uh, <laughs> of a firearm with a silencer on it. You see, they call him Dr. Shush. Dr. <laughs> Shush. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. That's cool. You know? Uh -huh. You want to send guns and ham radio on Facebook? It's fun. We talk about all this stuff and more. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, like, I'm not monetized. So I ain't got to worry about any of that. We can talk. Say I all. I you usually want. appeal it and they take it off. I'm not selling guns. They, they, they don't like when you sell guns. guns. Yeah. The only, the only events I got is this one and this one. <laughs> <laughs> I was on a lake in a boat and the boat overturned and all of mine got uh, sitting at the bottom of the lake now. Okay. That was very unfortunate. Right. Mm. Yes. Yeah. So I don't have any, you know, I'm just a, a good loyal subject. <laughs> all right. So, um, so yeah, so that was pretty interesting. I'm seeing a notice that this thing is gonna die soon. Oh my god. But anyway, um, yeah, so HPM was was um was pretty special and they had these uh, special events for him. And um they had a yeah, 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 Hammer, you vet your guy. That's pretty common, you know, here, especially when we have these oppressive laws that things get lost at the bottom of the ocean. But um, <laughs> but yeah, it's um, it's quite interesting. So that's another way to do a special event, right? You have the stroke suffix, okay? 
Now, the best part of special events, um, really, I think, apart from the contacts, is when you you tally up everything and then you you know you have the certificates and cards and stuff like that. Not all of them do cards. Some of them do. Most of them do certificates, right? Mm -hmm. There was one I did recently. The, um, the centennial for the first transatlantic test. And uh, I will show you what the certificate I have. Contest.edoblarl.org. So um, I sent you a book 200 meters and down, right? You could read a little bit of it now and again. Yes, right? yes, you definitely did that. And um, I'm actually... Um, going to I, I've I have a lot of friends who've been talking about this and I've seen a lot of friends do this there's actually a program called 75 and hard and you read 10 pages a day uh, for 75 days and you eat clean and you drink a gallon of water and you do two exercises 30 45 minutes wow. uh, twice a day and if you screw up at any point in time, no matter if you're on the 10th day or even the 74th day and you screw up and you don't do one of those things, yeah, yeah. I got to start over. Mm -hmm. So I thought about doing that so I can get some more reading in. Yeah. So I've got tons of books that I need to read. Um, oh, man. That's going to be rough. Uh, yeah, give me one second. I gotta get the power cord from my laptop. It's gonna die out here soon. Yeah. Oh no! Oh. oh no! What? Stop camera. Onion. I didn't do it this time. Okay, this should be a little better. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. What happened is my laptop was going to die. I don't know where the power adapter for it went. So I had to plug this into, into something here. And to actually one of these, um, the EcoFlow batteries to get it to charge. It's funny. All right. Am I there or not? No, you're here. I've... Hold on. All right, I added you okay. back. I don't know. Are you like there? Then you weren't there. And then so I just removed you and added you back in. So that way you're there. Yeah. So your last gun was a nuclear missile, huh? Okay. Interesting. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I've gone nuclear recently, so we're, we're good. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So, um, Maybe I whetted your right about your appetite about special events. Are you gonna take part in any or are you gonna look you're probably gonna look for someone on the bands when you get a proper radio set up, right? And proper Yeah, when I get a whole proper radio set up and I'm not working QRP from the house, which is a pain. Yeah. So um yeah. Cause I think what I'm gonna do is I might try to sit here and see what I can't do this weekend and try different spots for the um wire and what i'm probably gonna do is send one of the kids out there and have them go all over the yard with it <laughs> give them something to do other than play an xbox yeah yeah <clears throat> one thing i wish we had here in the united states was um so in other countries you know especially like in europe they have like the ability to get some really funky call signs you know, um, yes. like the, one of the first ones I remember was in Germany when they had the Soccer World Cup. They got like Delta Radio and then 2006 and then a letter, right? So they mm -hmm. got Delta Radio 2006, Alpha, Bravo, etc. 
and that was to celebrate the Soccer World Cup. Um, here in the United States, we can't do that. The only one we ever got that was a special call sign like that was W100AW, right? And that literally took an act of Congress. You know, I was told um, Dan Henderson at the AWRL, he told me that, um, yeah, he they literally had to talk to a congressman to get that done. That was that was crazy. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, the certificate I want to show you is um, the one under non-cost contest events. Um, so I did the the transatlantic centennial, and um, you had to contact the the AWRL station W1AW or um, uh, and the uh, GB2ZE. So I contacted them both pretty early on, actually. Right? So I got mm -hmm. the W1AW and GB2ZE. This was on here. If you notice, this was on the, this cover, this was on the the QST magazine and also mm -hmm. British Radcom magazine. Yeah, yeah, and we had done, uh, we had mentioned it in our stuff, so yeah. Right. So this is a nice special event. I'm, I, I printed this out. I'm going to frame it up. Looks really nice. You know? Um, mm -hmm. EA for goal. <laughs> Is that a real call sign? Are you serious? I, I, you know, I wouldn't put it past them to say that. You know? Maybe. Yeah. So let's see here. So anyway. Yeah, and you know, I heard like in Finland they have like, and I saw one this this amateur on YouTube have like OH seventy three ELK as a call sign. You know, I don't even think that's a special event. You know, she made some video about a breaststroke or something. Who did? Kind of weird. <laughs> Who made a video about a what? Oh Swimming the breaststroke. I don't know. I mean, isn't that the first um, thing we were taught in school? I mean, swimming anyway was the uh, breaststroke. I mean, like, seriously? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, I, I'm horrible. I, 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 I make, I'm okay with breaststrokes. I, I'm just not very good at them. So we'll, we'll just keep it that way. I don't drown. I don't drown. But So, Ron, Ron, let me tell you what I thought of that whole flap, okay? <laughs> With the DX commander, I really think that people over overreacted to Dave Castler's video. Okay, I think Dave Castler is entitled to his opinion. My God, people jumped to defend Lord Callum. Um. Okay, I know Dave's assistant had a problem with it. You know what? I don't own an, that antenna. I have no dog in this fight. You know. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, it's almost as fun putting it together as blocking another spammer. Okay. Yes. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I've never um, put one um, together. Yeah. Obviously, I don't have a DX commander, but mm. uh, I definitely won't be using the breaststroke to put it together. That's for real. <laughs> yeah. No. I. I don't know. I might get one for portable use sometime. It's. Uh. You know. It's pretty. Pretty interesting. You know, yeah, no. And uh, what was that other? What was the other one? I can't think of it. Impasse. You have an impasse. Yeah, I have an impasse. Yeah. Uh -huh. Me? Oh, you? No. Oh no, no. Okay, so yeah. So tell tell them the story of Jason not putting it together. This should be good. Okay. So back many moons ago. Okay. Yeah. Um. They had been asking me for like what over a year now when I was going to get my general and things like that. So I just spouted off, yeah. And my good old sticking my foot inside into my mouth, which yeah. I can do, I can yeah. do. Um, I'm flexible enough for that. Um, mm. yeah, maybe not at the moment because I'm I'm getting adjusted by the chiropractor, but you know. Um, I can. Yeah. And uh, 
I sat there and was just kept saying, you know, everybody's like, when are you going to get your general? When are you going to get your general? I said, um, well, I can tell you this. I'm going to get my general before uh, 2.0 gets uh, his DX commander built. Uh, I guarantee you that. Yeah, boy. And I was, and everybody's <laughs> like, yeah, shots fired. And I was like, yeah. So then I, uh, you know, went and got my general and mm -hmm. he's not his DX commander yet. Matter of fact, he bought everyone in his club a DX commander, and I guarantee you he didn't even help them put it together. Let they me tell you something, okay? I was kind of, I was taken aback at how, you know, they literally bet against you not getting a general, okay? They literally bet against you. <laughs> and you had the last I mean, last. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My chapstick drop. Golf clap. <laughs> so, in 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 my true cat fashion, claws are out. Um, I guarantee you, if I was to get by a DX commander, okay, or if Lord Callum graciously sends me one, I guarantee you, I will literally put that thing together. Hmm. I had to get a solder and iron, but I guarantee you, I can put that thing together and have it together before Jason ever puts his together. Okay. And then I'll just make a video of me putting it together. And every time I'll, I'll be saying, Hey, Jason, this is what you do now. And then you do this now. And then you do this now and see how easy it was for me to put this together. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, it's all in fun. You know what I mean? But you know what? You do have some good mentors. Um, you have uh, Kate MRD. Um, <laughs> you have me. You have um, who else? Um, I mean, Ham Radio Adventure Guy, I think. I mean, I mean, all, all I'm saying yeah. is, is uh, I would definitely make a video and make sure I was walking him step by step that I, what I had done so that way he can repeat it. Yeah. I that, way think I can, that way I can teach him something. Instead of yeah. him teaching, trying to teach me something. Poor Dave. Anyway. I just think he was having a bad day with that with that <laughs> antenna. You know, it's like, I mean, you know, it's, we all have bad days. I I screwed up some pretty antennas pretty bad, too, and other stuff, you know. So I'm not really out to criticize people. Um, and then Lon is saying there's suspect cat will have taken past her extra. No, I don't think so. I think um, you'll get it after no, tax season. I've not made a goal for that. I made a goal for my general, and I stuck to it this time. And I only told Rhea about my goal. Nobody else didn't even know my goal. Yeah, and I basically pushed her along with ham radio prep and all these other tools. And, you know, she mm -hmm. got it. She oh, got on, it. Lon on Lon's behalf, he is right. I mean, when asked, I did say I needed I needed uh, to study, and then all of a sudden, I'm a general. So, I mean, I knew I knew I did that part. So. Yeah. Well, you know, everybody has their favorite um, Joseph. Everybody has their favorite antenna. I don't own one, so I have no opinion about the antenna. You know, I have zero opinion about um, the DX commander. Um, I don't. You know, I have I have other antennas. I have antennas I made. I have some I bought from DX Engineering. Um, like my whole vertical array in the backyard, the back, well, not backyard, in the back, in the the field out in the back is um, from DX Engineering Parts. So, yeah. So, yeah. Um, probably so, Ed. And, and I might, I might just, you know, watch Mike's video on how to do it, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm maybe yeah i but it looks pretty simple i mean you know it's just like a plate with some I mean, parallel wires and a fiberglass pole I mean, and you know you should be done you know so it doesn't look too hard really know. you know and then there's instructions and stuff yeah um yeah other than that um <laughs> <laughs> you have an end fed half wave okay yeah I you know, um, I don't I don't own an end fed, but I have one that we're going to be assembling. So, oh yes, I, there is one that you're going that we are going to be assembling. Yeah, and uh, Juan, good luck yeah. on taking your general. 
The only thing I'm going to tell you is um, study. Uh, take your take those tests over and over and over again. If you can make a 89 or above, you will pass. Mm. If you're yeah. lucky like me and get 100 on one of your tests, then you'll be like doubly excited. Mm. And then realize you'll only end up with an 89 on the test. So anyway, keep taking those tests. And then, yeah. you know, you'll be good. And then um, take it 30 minutes prior to you actually taking the test. So that way you have like a refresher of everything. But do not overstudy and burn out your brain. Yeah. That will see you crappy results. Yeah. I didn't know Lawn was in, 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 in Dallas Fort Worth, you know. Dallas Fort Worth is one of my favorite places to go. Yeah. And I have I have lots of friends in, in I have, I have lots of friends in that part of Texas. And uh, you know. I really I mean, I don't know anybody down south. Well, I know a few people from down south in Houston and such like that, but you know, in like in Dallas Fort Worth is where most of my contacts and friends are you know um interesting uh what do you call a doctor who's last in his class here's some trivia in the united states you'll call him or her doctor okay in a country like korea you will not because you have to be in the top percentile of your class to to get licensed there okay um glarg oh he's still a doctor yeah, uh, Clark, okay. Um, yeah, building antennas is fun. I mean, I build a lot of things besides antennas, too. You know, I always tell people my favorite piece of ham equipment is a soldering iron or soldering iron. You know, you say, I mean, like, yeah, we have to say it properly. Like, you, you know, you say solder because you solder things in Britain. And in America, you say you solder that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Let's solder that shit. Yeah. <laughs> I actually have one here that I'm gonna that I'm going to be putting up on the channel soon. Um no, it's not in this bag. It's in another bag. But it's um it's a it's a propane torch, not protein, propane butane torch. And um basically it's an all-in-one tool for PL259 installation, is what I call it. Okay. This one does everything. I'll show you how to, to install a PL259 with, with this thing. Now, why does that look like a lightsaber? It's not. It's a torch. I know, but if you look at it, the way you were holding it, no, back it up, back it up, back it up, flip it up. <laughs> yeah, it looked like a lightsaber. <laughs> That's yeah. all I'm saying. So you're gonna go Star Wars on us, Rhea? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it yeah. Ed, it's um Ed, it is butane. Yeah, it's butane. And you know the funny thing about um, I'm not gonna go Star Wars. I'm actually not a Star Wars nerd. But um here's the thing, the adventure I had about butane, right? Mm -hmm. Everywhere you go in New Jersey, so you know, you go to your local smoke shop, right? To buy this. Yes. To buy the butane. Um, everywhere I went, right? I went to one local smoke shop called Puff City, okay? And apparently, they weren't puffing cigars anymore and cigarettes. They were puffing the magic dragon, okay? Puffing the magic dragon? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because they legalized that stuff in New Jersey. <laughs> um... Yeah, you know, I, as a matter of fact, I do. I have one of those. I had one I bought years ago. And um, stripping and crimping, yeah, I could do that. Um, I mean, you know, good. yeah. Yeah, and you know, Joe, Joe, I actually got this idea from you. I went to my local Harbor Freight and I picked up this one. This is a nice piece of kit, I think. You know, I don't like the, pl the plastic feels kind of flimsy, I'll be honest, because I have a, one of the old Radio Shack ones. And the old Radio Shack ones are nicer feeling, but um, this newer one is a—it's bigger, but it feels kind of cheap, you know. I mean, I'm sure it gets the job done. It did, and, you know, in my test of it, but it just, um, you know, it just—it just doesn't feel like. And the, the capacity of the gas tank is not really that high, although that's probably good that you don't fill it up and leak out, you know. Yeah. Yeah, for tobacco use only. <laughs> but 
But I'm telling you, in New Jersey, it's getting it's getting like that. Like every shop you go to, that's what they're selling. And and it's kind of you know I want to. I don't like the term cultural appropriation, right? But um, I'm from the Caribbean, okay? And while it's not my heritage, that new kind of music, but they're playing this dance hall music, you know, the reggae music with the heavy bass lines and, and such inside there because that's the music you play when you smoke. I think you muted because you're laughing. Oh my god! Okay, let me tell you the story. Okay, I bought this thing like a year ago. Okay, it's a yeah. Zippo rechargeable candle lighter, and mm -hmm. I was like, "Oh my god, I can't believe I spent like I don't remember how much money I spent on it." And I was like sitting it over here, and I was like, "Man, you know, this is just like one of the regular lighters." And then I realized, oh yeah, I had this box. And I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, yeah. It's like, she's got her torch out. I want to show her my torch. So, yeah, it recharges and everything. Don't ask. Is it? It's not a gas one, right? It's like one of those Tesla coils. No, it's just a, um, it's a, um, um, up to 26 arcs per charge. Okay. So, it's, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's what they call a Tesla coil lighter. Right? Yeah, that's what it is. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. And Joe, I did notice that it gets very hot very quickly. And, you know, it's nice for that, you know, probably because the metal's so thin, but it gets really nice and hot. And I like what I like about this. I mean, I'm spoiling the video, but my video, but I'll tell you, you disassemble this. Okay. And then you have just this part, which is like a torch, right? And then you have this part you could put on this part, which is a heat blower. Okay. What are you doing? Chest this thing out. And then you know this. What this is that sound? This actually. Rain sound. You could sorry. You could, sorry you could put on this here. Oh, this will and then you have out. a um. This is like a gas mantle, right? But so because of that, you have this gas mantle, and then when the flame shoots up here, it heats the gas mantle. And you get a heat gun, so you can use it as a heat shrink. Okay. And then, of course, you put on the um, the the, um, the soldering tip afterward, back on, and you're good. But I think it's easy to just put this to put this on here, like this, right? And you have this whole thing here, but you can unscrew this tip, and you get an instant heat gun, right? Because I like to heat shrink my PL259s and other, um, well, not PL259s, but end connectors. But I do like to heat shrink the PL259s when I when I join them together. When I screw them on, you know, I put the, the, um, the heat shrink. And then, yeah, so you have the blower here, and then you can just take this whole thing off and it becomes just a torch. You know, yeah, Horror Frame has some good stuff. Um, they have some bad stuff, but they have some good stuff at times. They're actually getting better in terms of quality. Um, you know, I, I heard I heard a certain person really loves Harbor Freight. Mike? Yeah, that's what I heard. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. you can see in his, like, when he makes these videos in his garage, you know, it's like Harbor Freight tools and stuff. Yeah. Yes, he's like he's like Harbor Freight this, Harbor Freight that. Heck, he made his battery boxes out of Harbor Freight. Uh, wow. Yeah, yeah, I like some of the stuff with Harbor Freight. I'll tell you though, you know, there's there's better quality stuff, but I mean for the money. So I buy things like that that are they're like disposable and stuff like that that I you know that I don't mind throwing away. Uh -huh. Right, and um, like let's say I have like a socket, right, uh -huh. that I carry up on the tower. And then, you know, I don't care if it drops and falls down, just like the bow thing I carry up there. Mm -hmm. you know, or I carry, I'm working on a car or something, not the Tesla, but another car. I put that on, and then I just bang the shit out of it like that to, to get off a, a rusty nut, you know, that's um, 
that got welded together because of New Jersey salt and brine on the road. You know, if you ever come to New Jersey during the winter, you wash off the salt of your car because that stuff will basically seize up all the parts below your car. Actually, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, I mean, like, we uh, we had cars and stuff that would come out from up north, and yeah. people would uh, look at them to make sure they didn't have any rust. Yeah. So the good thing about my car is that they use some, um, they use different types of alloys that don't really rust and salt, but you know, it still gets a little corroded, just doesn't get corroded as much. Well, you know, down here in the south, we don't have that problem too much because, you know, yeah. we ain't having to soft our roads or anything like that. But then yeah, you just slip and slide and, you know, make a wreck. That's all. <laughs> and then you go on mute. Oh, I'm on mute. My bad. Everybody slides down in the south. Nobody knows how to drive. Right. And everybody goes out and buys all the milk and bread. So apparently everybody's going to have milk bread. Well, they buy milk, bread, and eggs, so they have French toast. So, yeah. Well, Joe, you know you're in you're in ice cold Nebraska, so you know it's like, um, you know, War you and Warren Buffett are are going to be freezing your took us off, you know. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see here. Who's being murdered in the background? I don't know. That would be my kid playing Xbox. Really. Uh, he's not getting murdered. He's just like giving these loud noises and I'm having to yell at him and tell him to stop. Yeah. Um, so in terms of um, let's see here. I'll tell you. Do you solder your coax shield to the outside connector? Um, in terms of the PL259? Yeah, I, I solder it the way it was intended to be. I do not follow the K3LR method. Right? Because I don't, you know, I don't like um, impedance um, bumps. So, um, yeah, I, I saw the coax. This is a little too close. I saw the coax. Um, hmm. Okay. Yeah. I saw the coax. So I put it in and then I heat up, well, I heat up the barrel, you know, and then I put some solar. I might put some flux to assist. Yeah, so anyway, uh, emergency French toast. So we're actually going to get a French toast event this weekend, probably. I um I spent uh, time wiring my new battery system, and hopefully we should have batteries ready for this outage, and then I have a generator just in case, too. Mm -hmm. So anyway, all right, well, it's getting kind I of mean, late here. Yeah, it is. And, uh, you know, here we're supposed to be having some of the same stuff that you're supposed to be having on Sunday and Monday is what I've heard. Maybe an inch, maybe not. It never knows. One day in the, one day in Alabama, it could be summer. The next day, it could be spring. It could be fall. It could be winter. And then we're back right up to summer. Welcome to the South. Right. I mean, where you don't know what season you're going to be. So you might as well just keep that jacket, that tank top, that bikini, and whatever else in your car. Just in case. <laughs> Well, you know what they say about New Jersey? If you don't like the weather, wait 15 minutes. Well, you know what? About Alabama, if you move any farther south and we get hurricanes, then you're going to have to come back up here anyway. So, Yeah, I've heard. I've heard. Um, you know, of course, in Florida. It's going to be freezing tonight in Florida, I think. Uh, is it? So, um, okay. Oh, I'm checking the weather at my mom's house to see what, uh, it's 54, okay, and is it going to get any, getting down to 49, okay, it's pretty cold, it's not quite as cold as here is, so, yeah, you might get hit with some big snow in Pittsburgh, we might get hit with some of that too. All we, I heard there might be winds, so you know. Um, no one drives worth a hoot. Yeah, they give away driver's licenses way too easy. Okay. 
Yeah, it comes out of the Cracker Jack box. You know, the mold Cracker Jack boxes. Instead yeah. of, you know, how you used to get prizes, now you get those temporary tattoos and a driver's license. So emergency bikini, do you put an end fad with it and you swim across the lake and then... I have, I have, I, I don't, I have no, I guess technically you could actually tie a, 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 an antenna wire and swim across the lake and then, you know, raise it up in a tree on the opposite side, I guess, if that's what you really okay. want to do. That's what the emergency is for. Out of it. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <so bad>. um, <laughs> Okay. All right, guys. Well, listen, we're going to shut this down. I think um, it's been fun. Anyway, um, thanks for joining us tonight. Sorry I didn't, you know, like I said, school nights are always like that. You know? I mean, school nights are school nights. I mean, <laughs> yeah. happens. Yeah. All right. 73, guys. See you next week. Bye. Bye.